What's up, real lifers? This is Ethan, your real life fluency coach. And today I have a very special lesson for you featuring excerpts from the Beyond Borders talk show. So in today's lesson, we've gathered advice from the best YouTube teachers who have lots of experience helping learners just like you. But I have to tell you, after becoming a real lifer, your English won't ever be the same. Just like Bandana's isn't. You will gain confidence even make English speaking friends. What are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so that we can join you on your journey and help you to understand fast speaking natives, to be understood by anyone, and to even connect to the world. All right, have you hit it? Then now let's help you to start feeling more confident too. So have you ever asked, I want to speak English with a native. Where do I find them? Have you avoided speaking with other learners because you believe it will make your English worse? You might be surprised to learn that this is not at all true. For example, Vanessa from Speak English with Vanessa shared how powerful online meetups with other learners are to practice speaking and how she herself saw her French improve while practicing it with non-native speakers. Yeah, I think there's definitely a benefit to meeting with someone who speaks English as their native language. I think a lot of that benefit too is for your personal, as the learner, your like ego of like, oh, I did it. I talked with an American, like you feel good about yourself, mm -hmm. but it doesn't necessarily mean that that is like the best option. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of different options for students mm -hmm. who want to make it happen and to feel accepted by other students too. And from talking with the students who participate in these, it seems like the fear at the beginning of speaking is very high. Like, oh, I'm like, I can't believe I'm about to just talk with somebody I don't even know on the internet. I'm speaking in English. There's a lot of multiple fears there on the internet. Someone mm -hmm. I don't know, another language. <laughs> uh, what are we going to talk about? Uh, just all of those types of things. I don't like to see myself in the video. Everything is piled <laughs> up. But then when they speak together, Mm -hmm. You just get each other. You understand each other because both of you are coming from that same place. Both of you are learning English. Both of you have overcome or trying to overcome that hesitation and fear of speaking with someone else. So I think mm -hmm. really being on an equal playing field, if we can use that expression, <laughs> with somebody else can help you to take great leaps in your English learning. Uh, I found this for myself as well in France, a lot of my friends were other nannies or other au pairs, but they were from non-English speaking countries. In fact, some of them could actually speak English really well, but I never knew it because we always <laughs> spoke in French. They were German or Austrian or Swedish. And when we were speaking together, because we were all French learners, <laughs> we could understand like 80% most of what they were saying. And there's an occasional new word that would come in but mm -hmm. if I were speaking with a French native speaker, I probably would have only understood 10%. It would have been very mm -hmm. overwhelming. I probably would have stopped doing that. So having somebody who understands me and I can actually understand them, but we understand each other's mm -hmm. situation um, of being a language learner. I think that that can be extremely motivating and helpful in getting rid of that fear of speaking, that initial fear. Um, so at least that seems to be the case for a lot of my students who have spoken with each other. And um, I think it's also an economical way to do that because you might need mm -hmm. to pay a lot for a native English speaker teacher or just any professional teacher, you're going to need to pay a lot. But to speak mm -hmm. with someone else who is also learning and is both, both people are benefiting from the situation, mm -hmm. then that can be a really great way to learn for a cheaper price, possibly even free, but just to be able to speak together is a great starting point. I could not agree more with Vanessa. So many learners like you around the world are frustrated to study English for years and never have the opportunity to improve their speaking. That's exactly why we created the Real Life app. Now at the touch of a button, you will connect with another learner in a different part of the world and improve your speaking and confidence with fun and dynamic English conversations, all while also discovering other cultures. 
What's more, you can get full interviews with amazing teachers like Vanessa, Hadar, and Emma with interactive transcripts and vocabulary. And the best part of all, it's 100% free. So check it out. Click the link up here or down in the description below. Or you can simply search for Real Life English in the Google Play or Apple App Store. See you there. So if you are afraid that people won't understand you or that you'd feel lost in conversation, I know exactly how you feel. I've studied six different languages and I have to tell you, I have only been able to get fluent by speaking at every opportunity. The best part of it is that I could connect with so many people and learn so many things that I would not have learned if I hadn't gotten the courage to speak with them. And that is exactly what Hadar from Accents Way explains. She says that speaking English is a bridge that connects and allows learners from around the world to broaden their perspectives. And then you go out to the real world and you come across all these different accents. Some of them are native, some of them are non-native accents. And then you're like, wait, th it, is this incorrect? Because I don't know this, or I don't even know how to listen to this because I've, I was never exposed to it. So I think that as learners, we have the responsibility of recognizing that English has different sounds, different colors, and we definitely want to explore that as learners as well because there is so much freedom to the language, but English is life and our life is, you know, everything is connected. And we can't, you know, talk about self-expression and equality and native speakerism if we don't, if we don't talk about freedom for everybody and equality and gender equality and, and social equality, right? And social justice, because I want that for my students. And also as, you know, I have a, a big community on Facebook, the influencing community of people from all around the world. And we, we do talk about these things, and I felt that in this case, not to talk about something that is so close to home would be hypocrisy. And while some people were not appreciative of this conversation, most people were. And we were able to foster and, and a good discussion where people express their pain or um, what they're feeling. And I think, you know, Allowing this is a reminder for everyone that English is a bridge and is an opportunity to bridge between people that usually don't have that place of contact. And I think that as educators, we need to, to have this responsibility and to take a stance and to show our students that it's important to talk about these things because that gives them permission to talk about what matters to them. Are you now remembering a time that you got into a conversation and simply froze? And then you were left feeling like a failure, feeling like others were laughing at you. Please forget all about that because today we are also going to focus on helping you to feel confident when speaking English with other learners. So you don't want to miss Emma from mm English's tips. No more freezing up you know, this perception or this idea that the only way that I can learn is with an English teacher or with uh, a native speaker. And, you know, for me, that, that's true, you know, um, to an extent. There's, there's the opportunity to learn with an English teacher, there's the opportunity to learn with a native speaker. Um, but by only sticking to that line of thinking, you're, you limit the opportunity and the potential for your experience to be something that is really um, like singular in experience. It's, it's like, a, like a classroom and a relationship between a teacher and a student um, or a relationship between a colleague and, a, and you know, another colleague. But by opening up the experience of learning to be not just with teachers but with um, other English learners, the experience again it becomes so much richer. You don't always need to uh, be able to turn around and say hey I've forgotten the word what is it because in a, con in a group context or when you're speaking with another non-native English speaker you still have that opportunity 
to ask that question. And if neither of you know, you have the opportunity to find out together and you get to create an experience around learning that thing. You don't get given the thing, you have to find it yourself. And in terms of retention, in terms of, um, you know, really helping that piece of information to stay with you, by creating that experience around the learning um, really helps with that, helps to facilitate that. Yeah, I think also beyond just the retention thing, it helps you to build the, to get the resources that you need and to kind of build that, that mentality that when there's a challenge that you, you overcome it in a sense. So you're building, because any, we were talking about real world English. So if you're using your English in the real world, maybe you're in a situation where there's not even a teacher around, you're having a business meeting or you're having a, you're helping out a tourist on the street or whatever the case is where, you know, you're not going to know some word. And so you need to figure out, you need to be able to kind of like put the pieces together in a, in a sense to figure out how can I still communicate my message. And I think that's really what fluency is in some sense is when you're able to kind of have those, those resources. If you still feel reluctant about taking the first step to start speaking, make sure to stick around and get some powerful insights from Shannon, from your linguist who speaks 15 languages. If you're not ready to go study with a tutor yet, um, which I do not believe that it's ever too early to start with a tutor. I typically maybe study a language a day before I start with a tutor. And that's just so I can learn to say, hello, how are you? My name is where I'm from. Where are you from? Uh, like I'm well, like just some of the basics to start with. And so I, I am familiar with how the language sounds, but it's not too soon to start with a tutor, but if for whatever reason you're like, I'm not ready, I'm worried about mistakes, I don't wanna to talk to someone, what if I don't understand? You don't need to jump to a tutor right away. What I would recommend instead is just maybe doing something to speak on your own, like read out loud or write short scripts about yourself and then read them out loud or record a video of yourself, send it to someone to get feedback. Um, there's lots of things that you can do that help you kind of prepare for ultimately having conversations. So like speaking is a separate sk skill from conversing. And I think we often forget that we think, okay, to speak a language means conversing in the language. And so that suddenly becomes really intimidating because not only do you have to speak, then you also have to understand. And so and then you're talking about two things instead of just one thing. So you can kind of isolate out both the speaking and the understanding, work on the two separate, and then gain some confidence so that you're ready to take the next step and have conversations where you need to do both. So I hope that you have enjoyed this special lesson. We will link the full interviews with each of these incredible teachers down below in case you want to learn more with them. And if you need even more tips to improve your speaking, then check out this video where Ollie shows you how you can improve at your English at home alone. And now it's time to go beyond the classroom and live your English. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Using English as the tool that connects us, it is um, about understanding the world, understanding different perspectives, understanding and learning truths about different cultures and different people. I think we, mm -hmm. we have been, you know, for a long time, fed information from certain, you know, generic sources like the news or, you know, through politics and that kind of thing. And we, we come to our own conclusions.